Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Music Again with Mr. Koenig. I am the music teacher at Delaware School. Before we get started, the code word for today's lesson is robot, as in I, robot. One of my favorite movies and, well, the robot, one of my favorite dances. So remember, the secret word today is robot. But before we get into all the fun and craziness of our lesson, let's try to take a moment to just take some deep cleansing breaths so we can be calm, alert, and ready to learn. So just like we did last week during our lesson, let's just pretend we're in this beautiful paradise surrounded by all these amazing, green, lovely, healthy, growing trees. Maybe we're sitting on a rock in the stream and our feet are gently like twirling around in little circles in the water. And I want you to breathe in through your nose for three. Breathe in, hold it for four, and release for five on a hiss. We'll do that one more time. It's a stressful time in society right now, ladies and gentlemen, so this is a good time to just take a step back. When you breathe in, think of all the positive things going on right now and breathe in all that good, positive energy. And then when you exhale, try to blow those problems of yours away on the breeze of your breath. Let's try it again. Breathe in for three through your nose. Hold for four. Exhale for five. Perfect. You're probably thinking that was nice and relaxing, so the rest of your lesson is going to be relaxing. Wrong! Oh, surprise! It's going to be just as crazy as it was last time. As a matter of fact, it's so surprising, my lesson is literally called a musical surprise. And you're not going to believe this, but I found several activities that all have surprises in them. It's kind of like a birthday party. Surprise! I'm so excited. Today, we're going to copy Mr. K as we listen to a surprisingly fun song that's going to get us moving. It's called Seven Jumps, one of my favorite activities to start with my younger students. Then we're going to echo Mr. K. That means I'm going to sing or do something and you're going to copy me. And we're going to learn about some surprises my aunt brought back for me from vacation. Before all this started, my aunt liked to travel all over the world and she brought, buys me these really cool souvenirs from everywhere. And I just want to show them and sing them to you. It's a really cool activity. Then we're going to learn about how surprisingly different songs can be. Songs can be all kinds of different things. They can make you feel or act or do certain things just based on their sound and how they're structured. So we're going to do some movement activities to figure out different stories that songs can tell. Maybe some fun characters too. And then we're going to read a little bit of a story, a musical story, about how once upon a time there was this king. And this king got quite the surprise from a specific composer. If we have time, we'll see if we get to this. We'll try to get pumped up with another fun, surprising song. And then we're going to end with a very surprising song tale. I think I've said the word surprise about 50,000 times, folks. It is going to be a surprising day. And again, remember the secret code word is a robot. Let's just jump right on in. Before we get started, we had some questions from students and families that watched the last episode. Thank you for so much for tuning into the bear hunt and all that excitement last week. And I wanted to address a couple of these before we continue. The first question comes from a student. It says, do you always spike your hair in a mohawk? I do. I'm so energetic that one day I woke up and whoop, my hair was just standing right up out of my head. So I've just left it that way because that just represents how crazy and energetic I am. And then the other one, of course, do you always have this much energy? Yes, I do. I do. That's why you eat your green vegetables, especially broccoli. Trust me, it helps. If you have any questions for Mr. K after the episode or you see any of the cool activities on Quaver or the John Fire Robin activities as part of our curriculum that we're using and you just need to know information about those and how you would like to access those at home during this time of virtual learning, please reach out to me at my email address which is benjamin.koenig at evsck12.com or if students have questions, I'll be happy to answer those on air next week hopefully. All right, let's move right along. Here's our first activity called Seven Jumps. It's a really surprising and exciting activity, and the greatest thing about it is we get to move around, but we don't even have to say a word. You just have to copy me and do exactly what I'm doing. Let's remember, last week I talked about personal space bubbles, so when we complete this activity, make sure you're in that personal space bubble. Try to be as level zero or low level one as you can inside that bubble, and also make sure you're not touching your siblings or your other family members. Make sure you have a nice little space where you can safely perform the motions and the activity and not bother anybody in your household. 
Let's just jump right on into seven jumps. Just watch me and do exactly as I do and be ready for some surprises. And that's all there is to it. You know why that's called seven jumps, boys and girls? Because if you listen through the music and as we add more motions, we're actually adding seven different combinations of moves before the song is over. And I love that because I've done this a million times, but I still get surprised because even I forget when the music changes. I'm like, my leg's out there. When's it going to swell? Oh, and it just scares me every time, but in a good way. Not like a scary monster, but in a fun little surprise. So speaking of surprises, I was talking to you about my aunt, and my aunt travels all over the world to places like Guadalupe and Timbuktu and Japan, and she brings me back all these amazing souvenirs. So I'm going to perform a little song for you that shows you all the souvenirs my aunt brought back with me. It's called My Aunt Came Back. Now, it's an echo response song, so I will sing. You sing back to me. The only thing you need to do exactly as I do is kind of like with seven jumps. If I start doing a motion, you need to do it too inside your bubble. So remember, I sing, you copy me. And then if I start doing a motion like stomping my foot or whatever I do, you do it as well. And you keep doing it the entire song. It makes it more fun. Trust me. If you're still confused, just watch. This is going to be funny. Here we go. Here's my aunt came back. Back came back 
from Timbuktu. She brought with her a wooden shoe. All my aunt came back from old Japan. She brought with her a waving fan. All my aunt came back from old Algiers. She brought with her a pair of shears. All my aunt came back from the county fair. And she brought with her a rocking chair. All my aunt came back from Guadalupe. And she brought with her a hula hoop. Oh, my aunt came back from the city zoo. She brought with her a nut like you. And I say, why do they call me nuts at the end of the song? That's not very nice, Mr. K. Well, it actually is kind of silly because you look crazy whenever somebody comes by to watch me in my classroom and they see me doing all this crazy stuff with kindergarten and first grade. They think I'm nuts. And I'm like, no, it's part of our fire album curriculum. My aunt came back. I had so much fun showing you what my aunt brought back. Let's do it one more time. My kids in class always say, please, Mr. K, can we do it one more time? And I'm always like, no, no, no. We got other stuff to do. But you know what? We got a lot of time today. So we're going to skip back to the beginning. Whoa. Technology is incredible. You got to love it. And we'll do my aunt came back one more time. Make sure you're singing after me, not with me. Make sure you do all the motions too. Yes, you're going to look ridiculous. So that's awesome. If people are laughing at each other in your house, yay. Smiles are my favorite. So smile and laugh and have fun. Here we go. Oh, my aunt came back from Timbuktu. She brought with her a wooden shoe. Oh, my aunt came back from old Japan. She brought with her a waving fan. Oh, my aunt came back from old Algiers. She brought with her a pair of shears. Oh, my aunt came back from the county fair and she brought with her a rocking chair. Oh, my aunt came back from Guadalupe and she brought with her a hula hoop. Oh, my aunt came back from the city zoo and she brought with her a nut like you. <laughs> oh, I love that little laugh at the end. I have fun with that no matter how many times we do it. That was awesome, boys and girls. Thank you for participating. Well, so far, we've done our seven jumps. We learned about all the crazy souvenirs my aunt gets me. If she gets me anything else, I might not be able to stand up and do that for you anymore. So hopefully she doesn't get me like a dinosaur or something crazy when she goes traveling again. This is Camille Sasson. He was with us last week when we did Carnival of the Animals. Why, why, why is he back, Mr. K? You're supposed to plan different lessons. This is different. Camille's just going to help us remember to blow up those personal space bubbles. Hopefully you're still in them, but if you're, if you're not... You know, we'll just go over how to review those again. If you're still in yours, I just popped it for you. And we're going to just review how to blow those up, roll around the room, find some self space for this next listening activity. So here we go. Everybody pull out your bubble solution. I want you to stir it around. You're going to make the world's bestestest, bestestestest bubble. Here we go. I love your bubble. Make it bigger. Gentle, gentle. It's a bubble. Bigger. Send it on the floor. Careful now. Good. Step inside it. Ooh, slimy. Pretend you got some bubble paint in there. Paint inside your bubble. Dip your fingers in the paint. I'm going to paint a little clouds, a little sunshine. It's a little rainy today, but I'm going to pretend it's sunny. Now roll your bubbles around the room you're in. Slowly. If you have a small space, just be careful. Slow steps. The bubbles are fragile. Don't pop them. And when the music stops, don't forget to freeze. Maybe. Very good. 
So remember last week, these bubbles represent our personal space. It's important to be as level zero as you can inside those bubble spaces because that allows us to truly listen and appreciate the music we are hearing and the stories we're trying to tell. If you're going oh, da, 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 inside your bubble, it's too loud. You got to keep it down. And those bubbles also prevent you from touching other people. If you reach through and touch somebody else's bubble, just like last week, it's going to pop. And you don't want to pop, okay? We want to be safe. Let's do that one more time. Roll your bubbles around. Hey, Charles. Very good. Now you're ready for our next activity. I'm actually going to exit out of my lesson. You're going, what are you doing? The lesson is not over. No, it's not over, but I want to show you some of the cool features of the Quaver website. One of my favorite things to do with my students is what I call creative movement. This is part of our John Feyerabend curriculum. And with creative movement, we learn to be artful with music. We listen to different songs that tell different stories, and we move in our bubbles. I don't really give instructions. I let the kids come up with the stories behind the music all by themselves. Remember last week how with Carnival of the Animals, we were listening listening and moving and trying to figure out what animal he was talking about. Now I just want you to listen and move to a couple of different songs and figure out what's the story. If you're a character in the story the song is talking about, what's your character doing? Is it going shopping at the mall? Is it going on an airplane? Are they tiptoeing through a creepy haunted house or what's going on? Music tells different stories. Let's go into the Quaver Music Shop. Whoa, that was cool. And we're going to click on the jukebox. And the jukebox just starts playing music automatically. And we can pick different styles and different stories of music over here. So we're going to stop this for just a second. Make sure you're still in your bubbles and you're spread out around your rooms. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a song. And I want you to tell me what you think the story of the music is. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a song. You tell me what you think is going on in the music. Just show me with your bodies. And I'll leave the titles of the songs on the board. Normally, I hide those from my kiddos, make it a little more difficult. But today, I'll give you a little bit of a hint, and I'll leave the titles of the music up here. Let's start with this one. Let's see. Listen. When you figure out what's going on, what's your character doing in this song? Start moving around the room and show me what your character's doing. play a little bit more and you tell me the story of your character. Here we go. Wow, you look fantastic. Oh, so do you. I've never seen that done before in my life. Just make sure you're doing safe in your bubble. Wow, kindergartners, you are looking awesome. First grade and second grade, you got to step up your game. Those kindergartners are doing great. Ah. Oh. What's the story you were trying to tell in the music? And just like last week, you kind of tell your answers towards the television. I'll be able to hear them all the way down here in our studio. So what kind of story were you telling with that song? Let's see. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's very interesting. Yes. Yes, a lot of you are telling me the same answers. You said it sounds like, like something is it, it, like almost strolling around. I had a kindergartner tell me one time, I, I feel like I'm Iron Man from the Avengers and I've just defeated the bad guy and I'm walking around kind of standing up. Maybe the American flag is billowing in the breeze behind me, proving that I'm a superhero. Or a, another one of my students in second grade told me, I feel like I'm Batman and I'm standing up in front of the spotlight on the roof of Gotham City and I've just saved the world from the Joker. <coughs> Sorry about that, I don't know what happened with my voice there, boys and girls. But yeah, it sounds triumphant, like you're a superhero fighting crime or saving the world. I agree. What about this one? Let's see if I can find it. I'm gonna stop there, hold on. Let's see, let's do this one. Yeah. Listen to it. What's the story? Why don't you know it, show me what your character would do if this music was
Are you as creeped out as I am by that song, boys and girls? One of my first graders at Delaware told me this. They said, it sounds like I'm inside a scary haunted house, maybe around Halloween time, and I'm tiptoeing around, trying not to get spooked by a ghost. Let's see if you hear that when I play a little more of it. Zoinks like Scooby-Doo! Do you think there's a ghost in here? I don't know, Raggy, but I'm afraid. Me too, man. And I'm kind of hungry. You want a Ruby snack? No, I don't want a Scooby snack. Actually, I do. Give me one. Yeah, it sounds like you're in a creepy haunted house. That's the vibe I get from this. And my kindergarten and first graders at Delaware, when they heard this the first time, they immediately started creeping all around. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do some funny ones right now. Ooh, that was kind of funny. Let's see. Nice job, freezing boys and girls. I'm gonna play it a little bit more and we'll see what you hear and show me your stories. You don't have to copy me. Make up your own story to the music. And a bunch of students from Delaware have told me when they heard this song, I feel like I'm in a parade, but not a, not a, 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 a huge parade, maybe a kind of a Disney parade, like maybe I'm Mickey Mouse and I'm walking in the parade next to Goofy saying, gosh, boys and girls, aren't we having a swell day today? I sure am, Mickey. <laughs> and they're rocking, you know, with Daffy Duck, Goofy, and Mickey. A lot of them said they felt like they were in a Disney movie and something really good was happening or they're singing a really silly song, marching in a parade. That's kind of how I feel. And I like, it's called the gum chum. So maybe, you know, it's a, a Mickey Mouse or somebody walking down the street chewing some gum. Maybe they're in a parade. Maybe they're just having a fantastic day. You see how each of those songs tells a different story? I want to hear about what stories you told. Feel free to email me at benjamin.koenig at evsck12.com and I'll show that again at the end of the episode and tell me the stories you came up with. You didn't have to copy me. If you came up with something different and you say, actually, Mr. K, I think the music's really about this. And da -da 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 -da, that would be fantastic. I'm always looking for new, exciting answers and perspectives on music. we got to get back to the next part of the lesson. I told you this is all about surprises. All those songs were surprising. What's even more surprising is I have a musical story that's all about surprises too. It's amazing what you can find nowadays. So, this story is actually pretty old, a couple hundred years old. Let's see if I can find it for you. Where are you? Oh, there you are. That is not Charles Camille Sanson. This is a new composer this week. This is Franz Joseph Haydn. Everybody go, hi Haydn! And the goofier you say it, the more he likes it. So if you go, hi Haydn, I mean goofy. Hi Haydn! <laughs> you know, that's kind of goofy. That's the way he likes it. Haydn actually has a really cool, surprising story about music. And I'm actually gonna sit down for this because it's very important that I sit for this. I don't like to sit, but it's important. Once upon a time, Haydn lived a long time ago, and when he lived, he worked for a king at one point. Now, boys and girls, do you know what a king is? Tell me, just shout it out to the TV. What does a king do? What's so special about being king? No, it's not about Burger King, although I do like that restaurant. The Whopper is a very delicious sandwich. Yeah, they are in charge of things. Thank you, first grader. Yep, I heard you. Oh, second grade, you're right. They rule over everybody. They have to do exactly, you have to do exactly what they tell you to do or you get in trouble. That's right. Kings are in charge of everybody. And what else do they wear? Is there something they wear? No, hopefully, yep, they wear shoes. Or maybe flip, I guess they could wear flip-flops. I don't know what they wore 300 years ago. That's a good question. They wear robes and crowns and jewels and they look Powerful. That's right. Well, Haydn worked for a king, and the king was very powerful, and he said, Haydn, I want you to write music for me. And Haydn said, okay, I will, boss. I sure will. And he wrote a whole bunch of music for the king. But every time the king sat down to listen to a piece of music, guess what happened? <laughs> he would sleep during all of the songs. Can you believe it? So here's what we're going to do. Haydn 
was upset. The king kept sleeping through all his great music, and it made him really sad. So we're going to listen to a special piece Haydn wrote. He said, I'm going to get back at you, Mr. King, because it wasn't polite to yell at the king or, or tell him what to do. So he got back at him through a song. Pretend you're the king. Put your crown on. Straighten out your head. Sit down in your bubbles. And I want you to pretend you're sleeping. Haydn's just pulled out this new song called the Surprise Symphony. And I want you to see what happens to me, the king, as we listen to this song. Sassafras. Oh, Nutland comes Thursday. Hiding. What happened, boys and girls? The music got suddenly loud. It had a big surprise out of nowhere. And the king, me, woke up out of nowhere. Isn't that crazy? Let's listen again and see if he wakes us up anymore. Hiding how rude. us up again. I encourage you to go on YouTube with your parents' permission and look up the entirety of the Surprise Symphony with Haydn. And I want you to do a special activity at home with your family. Count the number of surprises you hear in the music. And let's see how loud Haydn keeps this music going. He woke up the king with loud music. Wasn't that clever? He knew he couldn't tell him what to do, so he kept him awake with loud music. We're going to do one last activity really quick today, boys and girls. I like to end my lessons with a song tale. This is called Over in the Meadow. I'm going to go ahead and play it for you. And I'm going to do some vocal imitations. This is something you can just listen to me sing. And here's your assignment. I'm going to do five impressions. If you can correctly email me all five impressions or the characters I did as I sing this, I will shout out your name on the next episode. Here we go. So they buzzed all day in the snug beehive. Thank you very much. All right, boys and girls, that's all we have for today. Your code word is robot. If you have any questions, please email me at benjaminkanig at evsck12.com. Thank you. Have a great day.